Today I'll be solving the 20th challenge on Ethernet called Denial. This is a simple wallet that drips funds over time. You can withdraw the funds slowly by becoming a withdrawing partner. Win this challenge by denying the owner from withdrawing funds when they call the function withdraw. I'll copy this code over to my code editor and also deploy this challenge. I copied the code from Ethernet over to my code editor. Again, the goal of this challenge is to deny the owner from withdrawing the funds when they call the function withdraw. So let's take a look at the function withdraw. Scroll down, and this is the function withdraw. Anyone is able to call this function, and when they do, it first calculates the amount to send. This will be 1% of the balance of the contract. And then it sends to partner the amount to send that was computed here. And then it also sends the same amount to the owner. And then lastly, it sets some state variables. How is the partner set? If I highlight it, I can see that the state variable partner is set by calling the function set withdraw partner and anyone will be able to call this function. How about the owner? The owner is a constant so we won't be able to change this. Okay, so this means that once we call the function set withdraw partner and then if anyone calls the function withdraw, this will direct some of the ether to the partner address. Let's scroll down and see what other functions there are. There's a receive function and the contract balance. The only two functions that is able to write into this smart contract is the function withdrawal and withdraw partner. So how can we deny withdrawal to the owner? When anyone calls the function withdrawal, it would send some of the funds back to the owner, but how can we deny this? Take a look at this part of the code. Before we send some ether to the owner, it sends ether to the partner address, which we can set by calling the function set withdrawal partner, and it sends by calling the function call. So what we can try to do is we set the partner to our contract and somehow deny any execution of the code after this part of the line. Okay, let's put this in code. So I will create a contract, name it hack, and then inside the constructor, we'll set the address of the contract to the denial contract. Constructor denial, I'll name it target. And then inside here, we'll set the partner address to this contract address by calling target dot set withdrawal partner to this contract so this will be address this so next when someone calls the function withdrawal the partner will be set to the hack contract and notice that it's using a call to call into the hack contract so what this means is that the fallback will be executed so i'll say fallback external and this must be payable and inside here we somehow need to make the rest of the code fail Let's say that we throw an error inside here. For example, we'll say something like revert. What will happen? Well, if we check the code over here, we call that call returns two outputs, a Boolean indicating whether the call was successful or not, and some kind of output by calling the address at the partner. So this will be bytes, memory, some kind of output, I'll name it rest. And what we usually do is check that the call was successful by saying require okay. However, notice that this code, the original code, does not do any of this check. So it's going to call the partner and it doesn't check whether the call was successful or not. And this means that just by calling revert, even though this part of the function will fail, since there's no check over here, it's going to execute the next part of the code, which is to pay the owner. So just by calling revert, we're not able to deny the withdrawal. However, we can deny the rest of the code inside here by executing if we were able to consume all of the gas inside here. One way to consume all of the gas is to write an infinite loop. For example, while true, and then inside it, doesn't really matter what code you put in. Before Solidity 0.8, we can also consume all of the gas by typing assert false. When assertion fails, it will consume all of the gas and the function call will fail. However, in Solidity 0.8, assert false does not consume all of the gas. However, we can achieve the same thing by using assembly. So say assembly, and then inside here, I'll type invalid. This will achieve the same thing as a failing assertion before Solidity 0.8. By throwing an invalid, we're consuming all of the gas. So when this part of the function is called, it will consume all of the gas. So this part of the code will use up all of the gas and trying to call this part of the code, there is no gas left, so it will fail. And that is how we're going to deny anyone from being able to call the function withdraw, sending ether to the owner. Okay, so next I'm going to put all of this code onto Remix and then deploy the hack contract. I copy the code over from my code editor to Remix. Let's try compiling the contract. Hit Control S, 
and the contract compiles. The next step is to get the contract address for the contract denial. And to do that, I'll go back to Ethernet. Inside Ethernet, I'll get the address of this denial contract by typing F12, and then inside my browser console, copy this address. Paste it inside Remix, and then let's now deploy the hack contract. Click on Deployment tab, make sure we're connected to Gordy Testnet, scroll down, and select the hack contract, copy the address of the denial contract, paste it here, and then deploy the contract. Okay, once the contract is deployed, the next step is to submit our contract to Ethernet. Ethernet will try to call the function withdrawal, and if the withdrawal function fails, then we've completed the challenge. Okay, back inside Ethernet, I'll submit the instance, and we were successfully able to deny withdrawal. You'll see the button change to go to the next level.